Well, that's interesting. Hey everybody, Lexinda Swirl here. Welcome back to my Paper and Other Obsessions channel. Two obsessions here, Paper and the Beatles. <laughs> we are going to revisit this in a comparison sort of way. These were two different ways that I got foils onto paper. So two different adhesives were used. Laser toner and embossing powder to get foils onto it. And in both cases they had to go through a heat and pressure device. Today we're going to test a different device. This is specifically a laminator. It is not designed to do foiling. It is designed to do laminating, where you put something between two sheets of thin plastic and you heat them up. It basically creates a plastic shell around your item. For example, laminate a photograph and then embed it in resin and the resin won't actually touch the photo and destroy it somehow. So it's not meant for foiling, it's meant for laminating. Okay. Probably comes as no surprise to folks in the paper crafting community. I'm relatively new to that community. So I was a little surprised to find out there is actually a foiling device. Same principle as the laminator, heat and pressure, but this one is meant for foiling. It's called a mink and it is relatively expensive. Uh, the laminator I got from Walmart was $30. This is $100. It does come with some stuff. It's a kit versus just the machine. But then again, the laminator came with some pieces of lamination plastic as well. So this is more than three times the price of the laminator. And we're going to test it today to see if it really does that much better a job. And this way I will test it. And if it doesn't, then you don't need to consider wasting your money. Okay, so here's the machine. It has some different settings. This is what makes it so specific to foiling. It has different heat settings and it has different pressure settings. Other than that, it's basically the same thing as a laminator. It's got rollers in here to apply pressure and a heater unit in here to apply heat. And you send it through. They give you in the kit a few projects to try. So I'm guessing these are pre-tonered. So you can just put foil over anything that's black on here and send it through and it will get gilded. And this is the gold sample foil they send along. This is called a transfer folder. However, one thing it says is if you don't use their mink specific foil, which this is, and I have some uh, right here. I have some right here, which is very pretty. It's very pretty prism foil. But they say in the, the instruction booklet, if you don't use mink specific foil with this transfer folder, the foil you do use, like for example, the stuff I get from Artistic Painting Studios might stick to this. So since I am going to be using that Artistic Painting Studios foils, at least in one case, the Beatles, I am not going to use this transfer folder. I'm going to use parchment paper. So I recreated this basically here, a uh, new background, black laser toner for the the guys themselves and their logo. And then I have the exact same groovy kaleidoscope transfer foil that I will put over the top. And then I just need a piece of parchment paper to cover everything up and we'll send it through. This zero setting is for no heat whatsoever. So that one's ready right away when you turn the machine on and hit the go button. This turns on the rollers, so we have rollers going with no heat, but we want heat as well as pressure. As I recall, when Simon Hurley did this, and I'll link to his video below if you haven't seen it already, he did pressure of two. So I'm gonna set it for two and that'll start it heating up. According to this, it's 13 inches, so I'm guessing it's meant for something that's 12 inches wide maximum. Now we can always send it through a second time, so I'm not worried about not having it warm enough. Okay, here we go. And just let it grab on. There we go. Hands off, it's gonna go through. So that was so quick and so easy. I mean, it took no time to heat up and it's perfect. It is perfect. I don't see any gaps or anything. Oh, that is gorgeous. That makes me very, very happy. Now, will you be able to see, I'm gonna to have to do some sort of comparison here. I don't know how well this is gonna come through, but I'm gonna do a close up. I don't know if it's gonna show that there's a difference. I really don't know. I think this looks better. There's nothing bad about this one. So for this particular comparison, 
a laminator works great or this mink works great. They both look beautiful. Now let's try the other thing, which is a stamp and embossing powder. Okay, so this is what I did last time. This time I'm going to use a bigger stamp. This is the stamp of the Enchanted Castle. This is a Zuri mold that they also turned into a stamp. So I have a Versamark embossing ink here. I thought because we're doing a much, much bigger surface area that it would probably be easier if I could apply the ink like this. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm just gonna do it this way. Now, embossing powder. I'm using my embossing heat gun. So it's now clear plastic in the same image as our stamp. Okay, so we have our embossed image that has basically clear plastic on it now. Covering it up with this gold holographic sparkly foil. Pull our mink in so that you can see the whole thing. Well, that's interesting. Wow, we lost all of the detail. Look at that. That is fascinating. We'll do another comparison. So we have a beautiful crisp design. I'm gonna try the mink foil that we have this time. Okay, this came with the mink. This is specific to this machine. Okay, so this is cool to the touch. I'm gonna to put it in our parchment paper and I'm gonna put the special mink foil on top. There we go. And we'll try again. It's possible that even at two, it's too high a setting and that's why this happened. This was just too much heat so the plastic embossing powder spread out from the design. See how this one goes. We can always do another test and turn it down to one. It's already cool. Well, let's see what happened this time. Yep. Wow. That's, that's kind of the same thing, except worse. Now, actually, it's a little better. So this was the first one that was very blobby, lost all detail. In this case, much more detail, but still not crisp. All right, so I'm gonna try a third time. We're gonna drop our setting down to one. And that'll cool off a little and let us know when one is ready. Put the other piece of gold from the kit over the graphic. So this would be less heat and I think also less pressure. cooled off. I'm a little nervous to be honest with you. <laughs> so far I haven't been particularly impressed with this method on this fancy foiling machine. I thought this would work so much better. But... Yeah that's a lot better. It's not great but it's a lot better. All right so this was the first one on setting number two with foils I already had, not mink foils. This was the same setting number two but with specifically mink foil. And then this was the one we just did. And I would say that this came out better, much, much better. This one has some definite issues. It has um, cracks basically all through it. So dropping it down to heat setting number one worked very well. This is actually quite beautiful. Uh, you could cut this out and use it on a card. You could use it as a journal page. You could use it as a journal cover, honestly, it's beautiful. So 
Do I think the mink is worth it? Well, I've had very limited playtime here. You've seen me do everything I've done with it so far. I haven't ever used it before. I honestly think that in this situation with the toner being the adhesive, that the mink machine works better. And these are both a artistic painting studio foils. So you don't need to buy special mink foils at all to use the toner method. I like this one better. I think it looks better, but I'm not sure it even shows on camera. So it would be a very slight difference. This case, I was kind of disappointed with how this one went with the laminator. But now that I look at it, honestly, the, the detail in the owl, we had to run it through twice as I recall, but the detail is a lot more impressive. And this was Artistic Painting Studios foils, nothing to do with mink at all on the regular laminator. And there's a lot of detail there. We finally got some detail here, but even that isn't as intricate as it could be. So honestly, if you wanted to do the embossing method, I would say laminator, but be prepared for running it through multiple times to get what you want. If you do get a mink, then it will work absolutely for both methods. It will just take some fiddling to find out which method works better with the embossing powder. And like the Cricut, I'm sure Every machine's a little different, so. If you are someone who has used a mink foiling machine instead of a laminator and you've had really great success with it, especially using the embossing method, please jump down below and let us know what settings you used, any tricks or suggestions you found that would help. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Stay safe, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.